Hey there, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you the Pre-Cal Honors 9-5 Extra Practice Number 4 Solutions on Limits at Infinity. For this problem, we're trying to find the limit as x approaches infinity of this weird-looking rational trigonometric function. There's a few things going on here. For one thing, the sine function down here has to alternate between numbers between negative 1 and positive 1. So because we're stuck in this range, that means that, and, and x is growing here, this means that this is a top-heavy function, which means there's some infinities involved as we move to positive infinity on the x values. There's a catch, though, because this sine function, although it's limited to staying between these numbers, it is changing sine back and forth positive to negative. It's oscillating. So since we have a function that is oscillating back and forth between positive and negative, and it's moving away from zero, so it's not converging at zero, that means that our limit is going to be does not exist. Um, we can't specify whether it's a positive or negative infinity limit because it keeps changing its mind which direction it's going. Um, so this is just plain old DNA, nothing else to really say about it. To find the limit on this one as we approach infinity, we're going to start by choosing our champion on each side. So we're going to ignore the slower growing terms in the numerator, everything except x cubed can go away. In the denominator, 4x to the 6th is the dominant function. So now reducing this, although actually we don't even really need to reduce it, right? Because we see right away this is a bottom heavy function. Um, so without even reducing it, we can see that this is going to go to zero. As your denominator gets infinitely large relative to the numerator, your fraction gets infinitely small to zero. On this problem, we're going to start by choosing our champion. Because we're going to infinity, we can ignore slower growing terms, such as this 3 in the numerator. So we just have a negative 2x to the fourth there. And also, this 2 in the denominator is uh, not really worthy of our consideration on this problem. So we just have an x down there. Reducing this, this is negative 2x cubed, if you wanted to reduce it. Uh, so now you can go ahead and plug infinity in, because there's only 1x. So negative 2 infinity to the third. This is essentially negative 2 times infinity, which comes out to negative infinity. To take the limit for this function as x approaches infinity, the key is recognizing that this negative e to the x, x to the fourth term is a top-heavy function. e to the x is growing faster than x to the fourth. Because that's top-heavy, that means we can essentially just uh, disregard this too. So we can write this top-heavy function here as basically negative infinity. And then negative infinity plus 2, well, that 2 doesn't really matter, so we just have negative infinity for the answer. The first step on this problem, to take it a limit to negative infinity, is to disregard this positive 9 down here. That is insignificant as we approach infinity. So this is really just negative 2x squared over x squared, or at least it's equivalent to that, taking this infinite limit. Now we can reduce this, and we just end up with negative 2. For this one, we're trying to find the limit as x approaches infinity of this fraction. I'm going to choose my champion on this one. So the only term that matters in the numerator is this dominant 5x squared that outgrows the 7. In the denominator, 3x squared is growing faster than negative x. And then we can just cancel out these x squareds to get a limit of 5 thirds. For this one, we're going to start by ignoring the slower growing terms. So pretty much everything is going except for this negative 7x to the fourth. And now if I plug infinity into this 1x that's remaining here, this is essentially negative 7 times infinity, which is just negative infinity. For this problem, I recognize that cosine of x over x, as x goes to negative infinity, this is a bottom-heavy function, which means that this is going to zero, uh, which means we're really just doing 0 plus 2 when all is said and done, and that comes out to 2. On this problem, we're taking the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x over x to the x. Now, e to the x is a pretty fast-growing function. x to the x is faster because we have a variable base versus a constant base. Since this is a bottom-heavy function, that means this is going to 0. To take the limit as x approaches negative infinity for this polynomial, we ignore everything except for this quickest growing term of 3x cubed. These other terms insignificant as x approaches infinity. So we plug negative infinity in for x now. 
This is negative infinity to the third, which is really just negative infinity because it's an odd exponent. We keep the sign. 3 times negative infinity comes out to, well, just more negative infinity. To deal with this rational, radical, weird-looking function as x approaches negative infinity, we're going to start by choosing our champion. We can ignore the 2 and the 3 inside the cube root because those are insignificant versus these 4x squareds. The 4x squareds can actually cancel each other just to give us 1. And then the cube root of 1 is, we don't really even need the limit there, this is just going to come out to 1. On this problem, we're defining f as this rational, exponential kind of hybrid function where x is greater than 0. We want to know which of the following is a horizontal asymptote to the graph of f. So we're talking about an infinite limit. Normally, if you have an exponential part of this, you have to worry about the limit as x approaches both positive and negative infinity because exponentials behave differently depending on which direction you're going. However, since they said x is greater than 0, we're only concerned on this problem with the limit as x approaches positive infinity. We're not going to worry about negative because we're not allowed to go back there anyway for this function. All right, well, if we take that limit, we're going to choose our champion. On the numerator, we only have 5x to the 20th, like it or not. Denominator, e to the, or e, 8e to the x squared is faster growing than 9x to the 20th, so we're going to keep that. And then between the two of these, we can't really reduce this at all. However, we do notice that e to the x is a faster growing function than x to the 20th. Since this is a bottom heavy expression, that means it's automatically going to 0, which means our horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0, giving us answer choice A.